Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chanel and in today's video, we are going to do something a little bit different. One of my usual videos is usually me styling my wigs and everything else, but I actually wanted to use this time to talk to you guys and just have like a little sit down girl time for my OG subscribers, the talk time with Nell. Yeah, remember those? Yeah. So today's wig is sponsored by Lace Wig By and this is their Izzy wig and this is the Remy Luxury Remy Human Hair wig. This is exactly what the color looks like. The lace goes all around the wig that's inside of the wig itself. It does have the regular combs that come with it. And look at this gorgeous color. It is so pretty. So this was a post that I had made on Instagram where I was just asking if you guys had any relationship questions. There ended up being like tons and tons of responses that you guys had. So I was like, you know what, we gonna do this. It worked out. So without further ado, let's get into styling this wig as well as answering your relationship questions. So the first question we have is, how do you and your partner navigate coming from different backgrounds slash culture? He does come from a very cultured family. And honestly, it was not a good start at the beginning, mainly because his family was thinking about like, you know, in the long term, we're going to have like cultural barriers and differences and different things like that. For he and I, it's not really a problem. And he didn't think it was gonna be an issue as well because at the end of the day, he's dating me, not dating his family. So it's also gotten better because, you know, as the years went by, they kind of saw like, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> so that gave us ample time to like, you know, meet each other, speak to each other, just get to know each other basically so that pretty much was able to work itself out the next question i have is how is it dating a light skin that's that's an interesting one um it, it really isn't any different and it doesn't really mean anything to me i feel like everybody just has a preference so the next question that we have is how do you find someone who has similar morals to you um honestly i really really feel like the best way for you to really find someone is to get out in the world then you can meet somebody in person that you can sit there have a conversation with all that good stuff it's going to be different you know and you'll be able to see exactly what that person's morals are what their values are you know type of integrity they have so obviously if you are looking for you know somebody who has a basis in like religion or stuff like that meeting somebody in a strip club or you know something like that or the club is probably not going to be the best outcome for you the next question is how do you discuss finances with one another we've recently started speaking about finances because we are looking to make that next step of moving in together rather soon i feel like it's something that you really do have to like you know groom your partner into doing because if you're not ready to really disclose that information yet. It might be difficult when your partner is, you know, inquiring about your coins, basically. Some advice that I definitely would recommend, especially to my ladies, would be to have your own set of money. That's something that my mom has always taught me. It doesn't matter if you're married to the person, if y'all been together for years, it's always a good idea to have your own little like emergency rainy day fund cash or whatever, mainly because you never know what can happen. The next question here is how do you navigate dating while having a career that's heavy with social media? Oh, that's a really good question. But in the beginning, I didn't really know that, you know, we were going to be anything to be quite honest. So I kind of just slid him the, um, you know, Instagram, but he did see that I did have like, uh, you know, decent following on Instagram. So that's when the question started like, Oh, how'd you get that many followers? What do you do? Whatever. As we continue to date, um, I did have a large part of my life online and from having a prior relationship, my OGs remember that relationship. It was like heavily in the public eye. I was like my next relationship, I will never ever have it be so public he understands that this is my job like this is exactly how i bring in income and he respects that but i also respect the fact that if he does not want to be in a video or if he doesn't want to be tagged or in you know stories or anything like that that's fine i feel like once you have that ground level of understanding your boundaries for your partner as well as you everything is good next question is how do you support each other's career goals so that's actually a really good question and thankfully i had a partner that was kind of like doing the same Thing as far as being an entrepreneur so it works out like he does video he does editing he does pretty much everything photography he has his own you know business based on that and i basically do the same thing which is content creation so so there's a lot that i've actually learned from eddie that you know has helped me to do so much better in my career because it's just like when you're looking at things from a perspective as a novice and then when you have somebody that comes in and tells you no babe do this do that you gotta play with this setting it's like oh my god like i didn't know any of that stuff before and a lot of what what I'm using now my channel is based on the stuff I learned from Eddie so us being together is awesome whatever his weaknesses are I have strengths and
and vice versa. So it, it definitely works out very well and we both support each other. The next question is, what's some things you haven't done as a couple that you want to do types of date nights? That's a good question. I'm like trying to think if we even haven't done anything together because Eddie and I have traveled together. We've taken road trips together. Uh, we've gone to like seminars together, different things. So we've actually done a lot. And I think that's based on us being like really good friends, but I can't really think of anything that, you know, we haven't done together yet. We've done a lot together so far. So the next question is, what's the hardest thing you've gone through together? How did you handle it? Um, I think the hardest thing that I probably went through while we were dating was the time when I had lost my grandmother. That was the hardest thing that I had to deal with because like my grandmother was really important to me and like the only person I really felt comfortable speaking to about the situation was Eddie and he's a person that would like you know help me out during that entire time. So let's say if we do have an issue that does come up um the best way that we handle it is really through communication so that's the biggest thing and that's why I also said that you know us being good friends or being best friends before we decided to be like lovers or in a relationship was also really healthy because we were able to really understand each other's like you know languages how to speak to each other and communicating with one another has been really really easy especially when we do go through things and that's why i'm very 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 big on making sure that you know if i do something that bothers him or vice versa rather than just like oh you know we'll let it fly like no i want you to tell me so that i don't continue to do that because if you don't voice your you know opinions on what's bothering you other person won't know so communication the good thing about this wig is that since the color is so bright it's not going to be very hard to like mask the scalp and everything it's actually a pretty good job the plucking is good as well like the hairline's not too bad either so this is a really 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 good wig how did you two meet also does he have any single friends <laughs> um eddie and i met at a barbecue and it's so crazy because one of my um friends from junior high school it's crazy to think i still am in contact with somebody from junior high but i think i was on playstation and he had hit me up and he was like yo i got a barbecue come out and i was like uh we want to and he's like no i haven't seen you in years you're coming and of course i was sitting there by myself because i ain't know nobody <laughs> and he had came over and he spoke to me and another reason why I liked him is because we were gonna play uh, beer pong but at the time I wasn't drinking because I was gonna drive home so he had asked my homeboy <laughs> he had asked my homie Pat if we could play with water and he looked at him like yeah no nah. <laughs> but just seeing that gesture that he did was really really sweet so that kind of like you know stuck in my mind like oh, okay he's a sweetheart good to know so yeah that's pretty much how we met next question is do you talk about marriage yes we definitely have spoken about marriage in the past i don't want to say that marriage is something that i'm heavily like thinking about right now because it's like girl i got student loans i got other stuff to worry about as opposed to marriages because when i hear about marriage the only thing i'm thinking is like debt you know like dress how much does that cost venue catering flowers all of that stuff is money i don't mind being engaged <laughs> but married like the actual process of being married like that's a whole nother situation we definitely have spoken to each other about making that next step because nobody's trying to really be like the 10 year girlfriend or at least i'm not trying to some people do that if that works for you god bless but that doesn't work for me but i feel like that's definitely something you do want to discuss in your relationship mainly because you don't want it to be you know a point where you guys have been dating for a long time and then you're like hey you know i'm trying to get married and they're like oh no like Marriage is not something that I ever saw myself doing and that you're sitting there like, what? So just make sure that, you know, you're speaking to your partner, you understand where their head is and you can see if you guys are on the same page. Next question is when you argue or have a disagreement, how do you handle it? Okay, so we do have disagreements. Some people need to have time to cool off. Eddie is one of those people that probably needs like maybe 24 hours to cool off. <laughs> I'm more of the person where I just want to talk about it now. But like I said, with communication and understanding your partner, I began to realize that that cool down period is very, very helpful because it allows you to just get your thoughts in order. It allows you to like reassess situations, understand if you were wrong in a situation. We also have this little phrase where, you know, if we find that we just cannot, like I just cannot with you right now, we have a phrase where we're like, I need 10 minutes. So we have those brief periods where it's like, if I said I need 10, if I said I need 30, I don't want to talk to you 
I don't want to see you. I don't want to hear you breathe. Like, just give me my time, give me my space and let me just relax. And then we can reconvene when I'm feeling better. The next question is, do you have similar faiths? That's actually a very good question. Um, I grew up in a Christian household. Eddie's family is Jewish. I'm not even sure if he really <laughs> believes in the Jewish faith. I don't know if he's an unorthodox Jew, but, or if he even believes in anything, cause he kind of like, switches from here and there sometimes and that wasn't an issue for me like i feel like you know everybody is allowed to have their own feelings about things and it's up to you to decide if that's something that you know you're willing to accept in your relationship so next question is how do i bag a caucasian fella i want to try another race oh my god that makes it sound like <laughs> <laughs> They're just like a product on the shelf. Um, I honestly couldn't tell you. I think going out to places is a really good example for bagging anybody. You got to get up there in the world. They definitely do have resources that you can use, like online resources if you are looking to date somebody in your race, outside of your race. I don't know if it's going to be the best experience for you because sometimes people do have like agendas as far as why they want to because some people do believe in trying different races like just as a check off their bucket list you know you just got to get out there and try to find people that's how i think you should try to find anybody regardless of their race uh next question is do things ever get routine if so uh how do you make it fun again we definitely did have a routine when we first dated where we would spend a lot of time on the beach but honestly the best experiences we had were on the beach eddie knows why <laughs> just getting creative with what you do like make date night fun there was a time where eddie had surprised me where you know we weren't gonna go out but when i got home i saw a whole spread of like you know dinner and candles and you know why my favorite wine by the way and that was really sweet you know like even though it was just us sitting in my apartment and just eating dinner together it was really sweet because the thought of him going through all that extra effort made it different and that was like something that i'll never forget but i also feel like you know you can make it creative as well just by going online and looking for cool resources like you know fun dates in new york city or wherever you may live like there's so many different things that you can do i think being spontaneous in your relationship is like the key to making things feel new because sometimes relationships can get boring like let's be real they really can get boring so you know just try to do different things and live outside the box come outside of your comfort zone is something else that i would totally recommend doing the next question is how do you deal with all of the haters um at this point eddie and i really don't have haters because i told y'all i had nipped that whole social media thing in the bud where i don't really show him on social media like that i think there was a situation where one time we made a video and a lot of people were accusing him of acting black and i think it's so funny when people feel like they know your partner better than you do you know like that's always really comical to me but even if you do have haters well, let's say if your partner's okay with being on social media block and delete that's the biggest thing like block and delete is all you got to do next question is how do y'all balance working together at times and being in a relationship it helps when you are dating somebody who's also an entrepreneur who understands what it means to like have schedules and deadlines we always see each other on the weekend so if I know that I have to film and maybe he wants to take me out somewhere or it's date night, something special, I know that I should do that in advance. And it also helps that your partner respect that you are trying to run a business and you're not going to always be readily available when they want to see you. Even with my um, master's program, he was very, very supportive because I was working, running a business, and I was still managing all of my other stuff. So he's very supportive during that time. And I think that's all it comes down to is just prioritizing your relationship and just letting that person know that even though right now I may not seem as available, in time I will be. Um, next question is, how do you handle opposing social and political beliefs in an interracial relationship? Um, that's a really good question and I'm not going to be one of those people that says that, oh no, we don't talk about stuff like that, because no, you do. Although sometimes it can be one of the things that does get a little tense in relationships or interracial relationships, I also feel like they are really good experiences because you end up getting to find out a lot about the other culture, the other race 
you know, vice versa. It's never a situation where anybody feels like they are disrespecting the other person's view. Like that's why I said communication is so key. But you also, which is the biggest impact, get the experience to actually educate somebody who may not know about your culture, your race, your social situations or what have you. And there are times where he and I agree to disagree. Cause you know, there's certain times where you just cannot have somebody see your way of thinking or at least not at that point in time and you have to be okay with that like that's totally okay all right so this is pretty much how the wig looks and these are what the curls look like right outside the box i kind of do want to put some better curls in it because once you comb them out they kind of like you know fall a little bit so how do you distinguish the normal fights and the ones that mean it may be time to end oh that's a really really good question okay i feel like if you are in a relationship and you are kind of seeing that you are fighting more than loving each other, that might be an indication that it is time for you to end the relationship. If you find that if you are trying to communicate with your partner and they don't value anything that you have to say, if they're calling you out of your name or using really, really like derogatory, rude, you know, type language, it's time for you to end that. One thing that Eddie and I have come to the terms of understanding is that we do not disrespect each other. I don't care how angry you are, I don't care how upset you are, don't do that. Now onto the second part of your question, how do you distinguish the real fights from the little fights? Take every single concern or complaint as a big fight. And the reason why I'm saying that is because if it's something that continuously comes up over and over and over again, meaning it wasn't addressed the first time, that's how you know it is a big problem. And I'm not even gonna front, Eddie is the main person that taught me a lot <laughs> about communication skills, you know, working through things and understanding that a relationship is a partnership. It's a unit with two people. All right, so I'm gonna take one more question. I'm just gonna curl the rest of this. Uh, why are men so dumb and don't know what they want? Girl. <laughs> I have a lot of male friends and some of them I have been friends with for 10 plus years. So I've literally seen them go from girl to girl to girl to girl. And I've also seen some of them actually quote unquote wipe some of them. But I feel like the biggest issue is that men aren't dumb because they know what they want. And unfortunately, sometimes they like to play. Men usually know like by them seeing you and understanding exactly how you are, they know if they want to invest their time into building something with you. And then they also understand if this is just like, you know, a wham bam, thank you ma'am kind of situation. So, so I feel like it's not only on men, but it's also on the females part to really you know, understand what you're going to tolerate and what you're not going to tolerate. One of the best lessons that I have learned to date is that when someone shows you their true colors, believe them. You know, like if a man tells you that he's not looking for, you know, A, B or C at this point in time, believe them. You can't get mad at somebody if they already told you from jump that that's not something that they're looking towards and you've invested all this time into being with them and then it comes out that they still don't want that. You can't get mad at that. The only person you can get upset with is yourself. And if you guys want more information on that topic of like believing a man and listening to what he's telling you, I'm gonna link a video that I did over here where I go into full detail on why you should believe a man when he tells you something about himself for the very first time. Hey guys, so I am back and I pretty much finished putting the final touches on this wig. I definitely feel like the decision to go back in and just kind of like revive some of the curls was so much better, mainly because you can see that the ends of the hair look way better. And I don't know, but like once you curl a wig or just once you put heat into it, it just looks so much more vibrant. Like you guys can definitely see the color of it. The hair holds a curl really, really well. I also wanted to touch on the density of the hair, mainly because like I feel like it's the perfect like the perfect 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 amount of density like perfect I feel like this might be one of the best wigs that I have tried mainly because there's no shedding there's no tangles the hair is really good quality despite it being color because that's one of the things that usually is like a hit or miss I can definitely say that I love this unit like it is gorgeous and it's probably going to be one of those go-to units like when I am looking to make a statement of some sort as I said before this wig is 22 inches so it is a little bit long if that's like your thing 
it's also very, very voluminous as well. And it's just one of those units where, like I said, it is absolutely gorgeous. I hope you guys enjoyed this whole segment of like this whole like get ready, slay my wig, let's talk about like girl talk type stuff. So let me know in the comments below what you thought about the wig as well as this segment on my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check the description box for all information and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.